Although Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief's translation of is considered by many journalists and writers to be the best translation of any foreign work into the English language, his choice of as the general title alarmed the seriously ill Proust and misled generations of readers as to the novelist's true intent. It wasn't until 1992 that the title was finally changed to Remembrance of Things Past is a beautiful line from William Shakespeare's Sonnet 30, but it conveys an idea that is really the opposite of Proust's own. When Scott Moncrief chose this title, he did not know, of course, where Proust was going with the story and did not correctly interpret the title, which might indeed be taken to indicate a rather passive attempt by an elderly person to recollect days gone by. Proust's theory of memory rejects the notion that we can simply sit and quietly resurrect the past in its true vividness through what he called voluntary memory. When we attempt to do this, we find that it doesn't work very well. We remember very little and often only in a haphazard and rather bland way. On the other hand, Proust's title should be taken to suggest a different approach, the narrator's search, means both search and research in French, is an active, arduous quest in which the past must be rediscovered, largely through what Proust called involuntary memory, as demonstrated in the famous Madeleine scene, then analysed and understood, and finally, if your ambition is to preserve it in writing, transposed and recreated in a book. As we will see, Proust lived long enough to see the title and, while he objected to it, did not take measures to change it. A native of Scotland, Scott Moncrief had served as a captain in the Scottish borderers during World War I. Before reading, he had already made a name for himself as the translator of major French works, such as, and Stendhal's two masterful novels, and. After the Great War Scott Moncrief had served as secretary to Lord Northcliffe, in addition to being an editor at in January 1920, a 30-year-old Scott Moncrief resigned his post at the in order to devote himself entirely to translating. Proust was completely unaware of his good fortune in having such a translator, his misgivings were founded in large part by a letter from Sidney Schiff, a British novelist and translator who wrote under the pseudonym of Stephen Hudson. He and his wife Violet, who both knew French, had been among the first in Britain to discover and love and had subsequently struck up a friendship with Proust. In London, on September 9, 1922, Schiff read this announcement in Messrs. Chatto and Windus, as publishers, and Mr. Scott Moncrief, as author, have almost ready the first instalment of M. Marcel Proust's Remembrance of Things Past in the English translation. The title of this initial volume is Swan's Way. Schiff, who had long thought he was the only Englishman capable of translating, objected to Scott Moncrief's titles. As incredible as it seems, Schiff did not realize the overall title came from Shakespeare's sonnet, whose opening lines read, When to the sessions of sweet silent thought slash I summon up remembrance of things past. In his letter to Proust, Schiff lamented the loss of the French title's double meaning, time wasted and lost, with its melancholy nuance, etc. But even more surprising, was Schiff's total misreading of his native language, he translated for Proust as a la manière de Swan, as though that were its only possible meaning. Schiff would later make amends and become a good friend of Scott Moncrief's, naturally, Proust, who knew something about the art of translation from his own translations of works by John Ruskin, became alarmed on reading Schiff's reaction and his rendering of Scott Moncrief's titles. Proust wrote to Schiff, saying he, certainly did not intend to let appear under the title you gave me. I knew nothing about this translation. Of course, Proust did know, or should have known, about Scott Moncrief's translation, since his publisher Gallimard had offered to let him inspect it months earlier and the novelist had declined. Proust, whose health worsened again, waited nearly a week before writing to Gallimard. Now, he said, in addition to falling with every step, his speech troubles had returned. He then conveyed Schiff's concerns about the translation to Gallimard. The author could not accept the title that meant in the manner of Swan. That was intolerable. He reminded Gallimard that and indicated the two separate walks at Combray. The English title was nonsense, surely it must be an error. Proust concluded, I value my work too much to allow an Englishman to demolish it. Gallimard replied that such a distortion of Proust's titles was indeed out of the question and he would do everything in his power to prevent it. Gallimard soon received the advance copies of In English. 
he had also retrieved from the files Proust's contract with the English publisher and his own letter to Proust offering to let him inspect Scott Moncrief's translation. And Gallimard had some encouraging news, he had spoken to Victor M. Lona, his agent for America and England, who knew English admirably well and who assured him that was not at all bad for the title, it was in fact quite good. In October, Proust, who was not to live long enough to appreciate the excellence of Scott Moncrief's work, exchanged letters with his translator, I was very flattered and touched by the trouble you took to translate my swan. Because of his terrible health, Proust said that it was a miracle he could thank Scott Moncrief. Although he had not read the entire volume, the author did have one or two criticisms. The first was to explain that the general title did not mean at all. Proust regretted the omission of lost time, which is found again at the end of the work. As for that can mean, but also Swan's manner. By adding you would have made it all right. Proust's suggested correction to this last title seems to confirm the content of his next sentence in which he admitted having forgotten all his English. Scott Moncrief's reply, written on Savile Club letterhead, was modest and brief. My dear sir, I beg that you will allow me to thank you for your very gratifying letter in English as my knowledge of French, as you have shown me, with regard to your titles, is too imperfect, too stunted a growth for me to weave from it the chapelet that I would fain offer you. Are you still suffering, which I am very sorry to hear, and wish that my real sympathy could bring you some relief, I am making my reply to your critiques on another sheet, and by the aid of a machine which I hope you do not abominate, it is the machine on which Swan and one-third of the June fee have been translated. Thus you can throw away this sheet unread, or keep it, or inflict it upon M. Gallimard. Charles Scott Moncrief Proust or someone discarded the sheet or lost it. Thus we do not know how the translator justified his choice of the general title that Schiff and Proust were the first, but far from the last, to criticize. Proust was already ill with a chest cold that would kill him in just over two months. He died on November 18, 1922. Scott Moncrief died in 1930, at age 40, leaving untranslated the final volume. His task would be completed by Sidney Schiff, writing as Stephen Hudson. Schiff dedicated his translation, to the memory of my friend Charles Scott Moncrief, Marcel Proust's incomparable translator. Had two other English translators, Andreas Mayer and Frederick A. Blossom. Proust's debt to Scott Moncrief is enormous, as is that of all readers who first discovered this vast novel in English translation. In a 1939 letter to his daughter Scotty, F. Scott Fitzgerald gave his opinion, Scott Moncrief's Proust is a masterpiece in itself. Harold Bloom observes that Scott Moncrief made it possible for to become widely recognized as the major novel of the 20th century.